Rubbies in the kitchen cooking. Rubbies in the kitchen cooking. Rubbies in the kitchen cooking. What's he gonna try? What's he gonna try? Rubbies in the kitchen cooking. Rubbies in the kitchen cooking. Rubbies in the kitchen cooking. What's he gonna try? What's he gonna try? What's he gonna try today? Hello and welcome to Obi's Kitchen. Now, you may notice at the start of the credits it says proving anybody, even me, can cook the most complex of dishes. Now this particular dish I'm going to show you today is a bit more complicated than usual. So we're going to actually split it up into three separate recipes and I'll give you, show you how to make each recipe and put it together into one wonderful thing. This is going to be baked Alaska with beetroot flavored ice cream. It's going to be that way to be beetroot flavored ice cream. Now for the beetroot ice cream, which we're going to concentrate on now, we're going to need a bunch of beetroot. These are usually sold in bunches of five or six. You're going to need about two to four ounces of sugar. You're going to need about two packs of uh, soft cream, soft cheese, I mean, and two packs, about 500 milliliters, we'll call it, half a pint or thereabouts, of uh, double cream for this recipe. Now, we're going to start with a beetroot. So what you want to do is get a knife, like a knife, and just cut below the band on each beetroot. So this doesn't have to be precise as long as you get that set sort off. Of. There we go. And this, well this you can just throw it away because it's not good for you. Right, now these, what you want to do is get a pan on the hob. Get this to boiling point. Okay, now that we've got our water all nice and boiling, what we're going to do is we're going to take our beetroots and just going to pop these in the pan. I hope you've washed your uh, beetroots before you've done this. And you just boil them for two hours. Yes, you've been right. Two whole hours. So, okay, we've let these boil for about an hour and a half, and as you can see, they're uh, quite tender. They're yeah, soft to, to the touch. Oh, they're under, of course, they're going to be very hot. So be careful not to burn your hands when you do that. Alright. Well, first of all, we're just going to drain these off. Ooh. Now we're just gonna give them a quick oh, no, we're going to water that should make this next bit that little bit easier. Just, that should make this next bit that little bit easier. So what you want to do? Bring them over to your chopping board. And just take the roots off. The uh, stalks off. Hot, hot, hot. Right. 
Um, as you can see, this will just peel now because you've cooked them already. So I'll come back to you once I've peeled all the uh, skins. Okay, now a little tip that I've just discovered myself. If you want an easy way of getting rid of the skin for beetroot without burning your hands too much, what you do, get a piece of kitchen towel, box another piece of kitchen towel, put your beetroot in there. Because you've cooked it for so long, the root should easily come off anyway. Along with your bits of stalk. And now all you're going to do is you're just going to rub it with the paper towel. Okay? And as you can see, it just peels so easily off. Look at that. Just com coming off. No problem. Got all the skin off. You uh, let it to the rest of them. Let these uh, I'm just going to chop them up so we can get on with the rest of the recipe. Okay, now we're going to put these chopped beet root that you saw me cook earlier in there. We're going to add the sugar. Basically, we're just going to cook these until the beetroot is softened. Because as you can see, this beetroot juices are coming out now, and that will cause it all to nice and soften. Okay, well, it says to cook, uh, cook until soften. I can cook through that with a spoon, so uh, that must be very soft, right? By the way, th this sort of thing, this cooking method, you always want to keep stirring for the simple reason that at the beginning, what well, you've got is basic sugar and sugar can burn unless you keep it on the move so now that you've got your syrupy type uh, well let's call it beetroot syrupy now you've got that you want to turn that into a jug That's cool for, for a bit before we put it into our blender. Okay, now that we've given this a bit to cool down, because I didn't want to put this straight into the blender, you take take this bit out. Now these is for your uh, purees and um, milkshakes. Most blenders should come with this. Really, you just want to wait for the train to pass and then all you want to do is pour this in pull it to the top oops my wife's going to kill me <laughs> ow, 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 hot. ok and then you just turn it on Keep doing that until you've got rid of all your yeah, beet, beet, beet and sugar. Okay, now that we've got a puree ready, that's going to be good. We'll take this back over here. And this is where we're going to get our cream and we're going to open these up. 
I mean, two medium tubs of this still should work. Uh, as I said, we've got I've gone for double cream for this recipe. For an easier life, you can go for whipping cream. It does take a lot quicker to uh, sort it out. What are you looking for? All cream in theory will form peaks. Well, if you remember the last time I made ice cream, it took the effort to do this one because I was doing it with a fork and by hand. Now we have our faithful friend, the electric mixer. So we'll just put this on. Okay, once you've reached a position where the uh, cream is stuck, if you make it like that, then you've got yourself peaks, which is what you need. This is a stage at which you add your cream cheese. Now this can be any brand of cream cheese, as long as it's plain. Just make sure it's, it's plain. we can just, I mean two tubs of the stuff should do the trick, you just put this in. Like so. So for best results, two lots of cream, two lots of uh, soft cheese. You can add more sugar to taste if you want, but considering we've already got sugar added to the beetroot, and I think we will go on this occasion. Right. Just make sure. And you know where it's coming again. Let's get the uh, mixing on this, shall we? Okay, now that we've got a cream all nice and thick, as you can see, I mean, just look at that. We're actually going to be brave now, and we're going to try and throw it in our puree. And, you know, if the idea of actually using beetroot, something a little bit different, does put you off, I mean, you can use any fruit or veg that you throw, you know, bananas, strawberries, raspberries. I mean, those are the more traditional fruit flavours for ice cream and I, but, you know, this is Robbie's Kitchen, and I do like to go for something a little bit different on occasions. So we'll just mix all this in. We'll use a more gentle method for this, because you just want to feed it through. Okay, now that you've got your uh, beetroot all through your ice cream mixture, all you simply want to do is put it into a bowl like so. Contain it.
you may find that you've got, got a few white bits at the bottom, but that doesn't really matter because you can always mix in what you've got and it should still come out the colour. of what we're going to get out of the boat so I said we'll just put that in we'll try to uh, level it down you want it to come out as best as possible when Put in your freezer overnight. I mean, you may want to at some point take it out and give it a quick stir just to make sure it's. But if you leave it in overnight, that should be more than ready for you in the morning. And that's when I'll show you how to do the rest of the, the recipe. So I'll see you in the next segment. Hello and welcome to segment two of I Baked Alaska. Right, now for this segment you're going to need six ounces of margarine, which we've already weighed out. You're going to need six ounces of sugar. You're going to need three eggs, which you've separated into yolks and whites. You need six ounces of already sieved flour. What else are we going to need? Oh, yes. Three ounces of cocoa powder. You're going to need a bit of jam. And of course, you're going to need the ice cream you made earlier. Now, that is how it looks. Try it out of the freezer that. Uh, 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 now the problem is it's because it's straight out of the freezer it's rock solid. So we're going to leave that out at room temperature while we carry on with the next part which is making the sponge base for our baked Alaskas. Right. Put the lid on that for the moment in case one of the cats decides, or in case our mystery guest, camera person, decides that they want to help themselves to the ice cream. Right. Now, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to take our saved flour and add our cocoa powder. Just gonna give that a quick mix so that the cooker powder filters through the flour. Right, a bit like that. There we go. As you can see that's now all filtered through nicely. We're going to take our sugar and our margarine, and this next bit you've seen me do before, if you're a regular viewer of the show. I'm just going to add that to our margarine, and then we'll cream it, like so. Right, now that we've got that all nicely uh, creamed, like that, what we're going to do. Get our egg yolks 
Please notice I said the word yolks. I'm going to get a fork and we're just going to beat them slightly. Because this is going to go in your cake mixture. Now when I did a, I think it was a Victoria sponge I did during the Lent challenge, I used the whole eggs. But you'll see why we've separated them in this case. And trust me, for the for a cake, you can't just use egg yolks because it starts, which will bind your cake together. So add this to our mixture, beer mixture. Nice and sloppy. Yeah. So what can I do now? I'm just gonna start adding the uh, flour and cocoa. We're just gonna like that. Okay, now we're just gonna fold this in. See me do this before. Get to mix all in together. It's all coming nice together. Hmm. Smell that chocolate now. Stiff now. Okay, now this. You just want to put it into a uh, heat grease tray. Put this in the tray. Okay, now that we've got that evenly nice and spaced out throughout our, uh, our tray. What we're going to do, we're going to put on the middle shelf for about 20 minutes on gas mark 6. Here the conversions and I'll see you in about 20 minutes. Okay now that we've got a cake partially cooked, I mean see if it is properly cooked, you know the old trick. Get a knife, book it, comes out clear, it's cooked. Alright, now what we're going to do, we're going to get our egg whites, I'm going to put this into our bowl like so, and this is where our old friend comes in, because we just going to put this on a couple of
Okay, now that you've got your uh, egg whites to nice soft peaks, I mean, look at that, that's not going to fall out. That's the way you want them, yep. Right, what you want to do is get yourself a little cutter, or medium sized cutter, depending on what size of uh, last you want to make. And you just press that into sponge cake like so. So I'll pick these up. Okay, as my regular viewers will know, not everything goes to according to plan at Bobby's Kitchen. They needed a bit more long, longer in the oven, so we put them in for the next 10 minutes, and we've got these nice lovely circles out now, you can see. So now all we're going to do, we're going to get a little spoon, we put on a little dollop of jam, so each circle and just spread that about because that'll be like a sort of glue for our meringues which you need on the bake Alaska cause... now hopefully we've left our uh ice cream long enough to be able to create our little scoops with the next bit right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Still a tough cookie, eh? Right, okay. You just want to put a bit of your ice cream on top of each circle. Yeah, your hands will get messy. I don't mind. And as you know, I always wash my hands before each and every show, and I've washed them in between shots, so do make sure you do wash your hands. A little bit there. Ooh. Some ice cream on that one. And as you can see, even though you've sorted out all your circles, you're going to end up with a heck of a lot of ice cream left over from your recipe in the first segment. Don't worry about that. Because ice cream is... It will be nice. Um, beetroot is actually one of the more sweeter vegetables you can use for this recipe. If you're feeling a bit down, you can use other vegetables, I don't know, broccoli, cabbage, carrot. Or you can use veg, you know, strawberries. Fruit, I mean, strawberries, banana. And it would do. I probably mentioned that yesterday when I did. Now, what you want to do, get your knife. spoon, you can get a bit of your meringue, make sure that you cover the ice cream, so if you don't cover your ice cream, it's not going to work, you will not end up with baked Alaska. You 
you don't want any cracks whatsoever if at all possible okay now that you've got your ice cream all covered with your meringue this is where I get to tell you a very interesting fact you see the reason baked Alaska works is because egg whites are actually a natural insulator they're flame retardants they resist heat so basically what we're going to do now is put this back into the oven, yes you heard right, ice cream in the oven for a further 10 minutes or so. The same temperature and then they should be done. Because we're just looking to brown the egg whites now. So we'll see in about 10 minutes. And now for the moment of truth. If all's gone well, and I've managed to cover the mango all over the ice cream, then hopefully we'll have some baked Alaska. If someone have failed, we'll have a mess. Oh dear. Hmm. Oopsie. Well, let's at least grab a spoon and see what it tastes like. Yes, all the ice cream has melted. <sighs> Damn. Oh well, at least let's taste it and see what it tastes like. Get a little bit so I don't burn my mouth. Spoon cake is nice. I'm still just about to taste the beetroot. Oh well. Well, this has been Robbie's Kitchen. This has been my attempt to make baked Alaska with beetroot ice cream. Oh well. I'll see, I'll see you next week. Look after yourself. Take care. God bless. Robbie's been in the kitchen cooking. Robbie's been in the kitchen cooking. Robbie's been in the kitchen cooking. What are you gonna try today? <laughs>